All right, guys. Um, I got the HDR50 here. Uh, I'm going to show you how I power tuned it up to over 90 joules. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of videos out on how to do this. And if you want to get right into the power pin, uh, I'm not going to show all that, but when I get to that point, I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys what I did. So, first of all, you got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, I think 15 screws. So, I already took those out. Now, <clears throat> I'll just start my little flathead. <clears throat> core um, yeah so what you'd have to do is just take you take your barrel out now take this piece here it's just a little spring and a piece of plastic that'll come out um, right oh, let's get this out of here Really just lifts out. <clears throat> okay. So here's the other piece. Now your barrel comes right out. Pretty easy. And this is for your magazine. That'll come right out. <clears throat> This here is the tuning run. It's a little bit smaller than the factory barrel in diameter, so you get uh, a little bit more power and a lot easier to match the ammo with. If, it, if, you're, if you find good ammo to match the ball, or sorry, to match the barrel, the ball, it's threaded, so again, you put on your barrel extension or moderators or whatever you want. Um, yeah, okay, now the valve's inside here. Instead of opening this up, I basically got one open right here. This is the valve that you'll find in here, the 11 jewel valve. Now, <clears throat> all you have to do is on the back, like you can see right here, there's that little brass cap again. That's what you use your 90 degree pliers to get off. And once again, that's very soft material, so careful. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so we got the valve right here. So this part here is your brass cap. <clears throat> um, this old one here has a red o-ring on the edge of it. And this one here has got like a plastic cap on it. It's weird. But anyways, there's your valve block. That's going to be stuffed inside of here. So you could either use something to grab it, needle nose pliers, and pull it out this way, or you just stick like a screwdriver in this tip, and you'll get a hold of it. And once you do, just go bang. It'll pop right at this end like that. And this here, once again, is your power pin, which in my knowledge and studies, I find these are useless. But that'll be in your bolt. Your bolt goes over top of here. And that goes into there. So it'll meet up like this. It goes right through there. That's where your heat core O-ring is. It's in there. So this pin will eventually meet into there. Um, that's your uh, CO2 restrictor. So these two parts will come with the power kit. 
you want to run CO2, you're definitely going to need that, but your factory valve will already have one of these in it. Um, the power kit's apparently a couple millimeters shorter, but I find that, yeah, it, it just, there's no difference in power when you test. Just like that ZRAM pin really doesn't do nothing to the VKS, so. Um, yeah, so you can, if you want, instead of buying the pin, you can just file this end down and re-nick your flathead mark into it. You can file that down two millimeters and see for yourself, but uh, guys have chronographed and said it done absolutely nothing, so I wouldn't waste my time with it, to be honest. Um, personally, I do have the shortened one in because I upgraded mine a long time ago and just never bothered to switch it back because what's the point? There's no difference, so I just leave it alone. Now I got a spare. But, so yeah. Um, to get to this valve, you're going to have to open up all of these little screws here with the same Phillips. Take that off and then, yeah, you can twist the valve out and off and just be careful because it's under spring tension from the bolt spring. And, yeah, that's pretty much it for the inside. <clears throat> um, you'll find tons of videos if you want to go further in and see. So, you can check those out. There's all kinds of them on there on YouTube. So, there goes back in. Um, casing, put this back in. Oh, and this is for your... Uh, you can either put your... HPA adapter or this is your CO2 quick pierce so you put the CO2 up in the tube screw this in then when you want to punch it to go just smack the side and there's a pin in there that'll puncture the tube so yeah when you CO2 you can do this you can swap these up when the guns put back together all you have to do is unscrew this you put this CO2 restrictor up in there and then Screw it back up and now you're good for CO2. When you want to run HPA, just simply open this up, remove that, and switch these caps to the HPA adapter. It's that easy, man. Back and forth and no time you can switch. <clears throat> so yeah, let's get this back in. It's actually been a while since I opened these up. <clears throat> so yeah, just reset that spring. Go. Make sure it barrels in place here. There, lock the spring nut. Should slip right in there nice. <clears throat> okay, so that's that back together. My hands are all greasy. Uh, now, we'll put the shell back on. And that's pretty much the inside, man. That's all you have to do for the inside. Parts are very cheap for this, so they're easy to get. Sometimes uh, getting the aftermarket parts, it's, it's more for shipping than the actual parts. <clears throat> um, all right, let's start with little Phillips.
tell this thing wasn't made to be open and closed, open and closed. These little tiny Phillips screws. You gotta be careful not to strip them. <clears throat> but you get yourself a good driver then it's alright. <clears throat> Just a goddamn minion. All right, one more. <clears throat> now with all the mods and all that power kit and stuff installed, uh, the most increases you're gonna get is from the long barrel and the HPA pressure. The higher, the more. I noticed just from adding 18 inch barrel to a 22 inch barrel gave me an extra 10 joules by itself. So I had three links on and then I put the fourth one on and got an extra 10 joules out of it. <clears throat> so the more power your gun's pushing, your marker's pushing, the longer you can go with your barrel. But I mean, in an indoor situation, it's, you don't really want a, a 22. 22 inch barrel creeping around corners and shit, so not a good idea. But it's great for planking and outdoor shooting and just obliterating targets with. <laughs> okay, so we got this back together. <clears throat> um, yeah, the magazine just slides in there, the gear going backwards. Click. Alrighty. So now this is the carbine. Um, you had to do a bit of modifications on here to make it work. Um, like yeah, in order to get the gun in and out, there's a little button here on the side. Just push it, and a spring will push that out, and the gun will go into here. And it'll just snap right in place. <clears throat> so now it's ready to go. And for starters, I had the, there's a bolt here. It's a screw right there. And then this piece will slide out. And there's a little spring behind it. You got to grab that or it'll go flying. But um, yeah, inside here, you have to drill a hole in this piece and roughly about 20 millimeters. So I used the 20 millimeters to go through this. And then there's a section right in here you have to go through as well. Um, you have to drill through that. So it'll go all the way through there. Yeah, make sure you gotta take this piece and do it separately because they don't connect together. And this is just a short version. So this here piece is the full version of it. So it basically just slides in there. I got the two bolts in there, so I can't really slide it in, but it just clicks in like that. And then same thing, I had to drill this out. And then I use this reamer just to kind of like while it's spinning, going in and out, in and out, just to open it up a little bit more. So that way the barrel would be nice and straight. But it was actually kind of a pain in the ass to do so but and then for the stock same thing for this piece in order to get that to go on there 
Had to make it again. It kind of looked like a keyhole. Yeah, so. And then that way this stock will slide on. But let me I'll first put the gun together from the start. So the pistol, take this and just that'll flip it open. Take your pistol, put it in. Now you're good. This I don't use because it's a shorty. <clears throat> so we'll put that over there. And now for the stock. piece comes in like this and basically I'm not done with it yet but I'm just gonna file the edges and put, put the screws in the bottom of the plastic casing yeah, anyways it's up or down it was in somewhere like that <clears throat> and then it Lock the carbine, make it nice and tight. <clears throat> but that's still in the works. So either way, it's pretty darn good. <clears throat> nice and stiff. It's just that's good for extra support. On the other carbines, a little more shakier because it's thinner plastic here. But yeah, we're almost there now. Now this barrel is going to get you the big, big increase. So, we'll screw that in. And then, connect. Slide check is off. So, gas is off. Normally you'd have it already on. This would be turned on. And, yeah, so now here for the barrel, we'll just put down this end. You can use just one, or you can use two, three, four. You have this on and make it more of a rifle. <clears throat> Like this, it goes on. <clears throat> All righty, man. That's pretty much it, man. One more length added onto this barrel. And you're pushing, yeah, you're pushing around 95, 95 joules with uh, 8.4 gram steel balls. <clears throat> but yeah, that's the carbine build, guys. And just everything I showed you there uh, got me up to the 95 like you saw in the video with the test. But yeah, guys, have a good one, man. <clears throat>